All right, what up, y'all? I'm going to raise y'all a question that a lot of people have asked me recently due to the, I'll say, recent success of NXT. Um, is NXT right now better off under Shawn Michaels than it was under Triple H? And while I do prefer the new era of NXT, starting off with 2.0 and then moving on to what it is now, Black and Gold was something different, you know? And while I think we shouldn't really forget that, at the same time, I do think that the current NXT is doing things a lot better than black and gold. And I'm not going to go into the multiple list. because I'm sure you've watched multiple videos. If you're here, I'm sure you've seen multiple videos comparing the two eras of NXT. What I'm here to do is just express one thing that I think is the main point of NXT and how it's changed over the years for the better. NXT right now. I believe is doing the best job it, th this company has ever done with developing superstars. Okay. Now I say that in saying, of course, NXT was developing superstars. You know what I'm saying? The superstars that we know now, some of them being in AEW, some of them being on the main roster of Monday Night Raw and SmackDown. They're doing their thing because of the standards that NXT set for them. Of course. But I do feel like, especially with the, the the NIL program, and then you have this new thing, the WWE ID, so where WWE's bringing people in from the independent scene and, and bringing them in and teaching them the way and just building up the roster that way. A lot of them will be in, will end up probably in NXT. Um, I think Shawn Michaels is doing a lot of a better job of just showcasing these superstars, you know, and putting them in small programs and then slowly building them up to the point to where they become something insane like take take trick williams for example you know what i'm saying when trick williams started he was merely a mouthpiece you know what i'm saying he got he got his hands dirty sometimes he mo most recently from what i remember he just used his shoe he used his shoe to wrestle he would hit people with the shoe to help Melo win you know what i'm saying he was just there he helped Melo because Melo wasn't the best at a promo even though Melo's not a bad promo trick is much better than Melo. So when Melo couldn't say something, Trick could deliver it. And Trick was funny. He's charismatic. And it, it just went off. You know what I'm saying? So everything that Melo couldn't do, Trick filled, colored in those lines. You know what I'm saying? He filled in all those gaps. And that's why they worked. To get to the point where Trick Williams now, as Melo's moved on to the main roster, Trick, two-time NXT champion, you know what I'm saying? Coming off of, I think, his best year so far, a nuclear superstar in NXT, and when he's showing up on the main roster, the crowd responds. You know what I'm saying? To whoop that trick, that that's if you were all right, to see what Trick Williams was when he first started off in 2.0, when Samantha Irvin was wasn't a ring announcer, when she was a backstage correspondent. Going into if you remember NXT Deadline when Trick Williams won the Iron Survivor match, I was I was at that show. That arena sounded like WrestleMania for Trick Williams. And this Trick Williams is not supposed to be in the spot that he was in. He is he is a superstar that I call an anomaly because if you watch Trick when his first match in his first match, he looked like he shouldn't have been out there. And for him to get to the point where he is now, is he at his peak? Absolutely not. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of things he could do better. But to be where he's at now, a nuclear super over superstar on the levels of Jay Uso level over. In NXT, hit from his beginnings to where he's at now, that's insane. You know? And to where he started off, I don't think he was ever really prepared to be at the level he was at. Shawn Michaels had to see Trick Williams and be like, you know what? I'm Not only am I going to build a story between you and Melo, I'm going to make sure that when Melo moves on, you become a bigger star. Arguably, than Melo. And we all know Melo's a better wrestler than him, but you can argue that Trick's more over. You know what I'm saying? I think Melo's still trying to get to the point where he's where he's over. You know what I'm saying? He's a heel, so it's going to take longer. It's going to take a lengthy heel run, then a face turn, then something like that. Trick, it was it was almost instantaneous. You know? So it's like, I do think Shawn Michaels is doing a better job of getting these superstars and saying, all right, what can we do to make you the most over we can? If it, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But Trick Williams is the gleaming example that I look at when you look at development. 
from when Vince was running 2.0, what Trick was doing, to this version of NXT, where Trick is top of the roster. You know what I'm saying? Now, the second thing, Shawn Michaels in this women's division, he has completely stacked the women's division where I don't even know who should be champion. You got Stephanie, Julia, uh, Roxanne, Cora Jade, you, you, Lash Legend, Jakar Jackson, they're, they're team between the main roster. You got uh, Delta just came in. I think her name is Zarya now. You got Jordan Grace, who I do believe she's going to end up signing. Kalani Jordan. You have so many super... I, I'm, I'm missing so many superstars. They just got Zeta Steel from the ID program. They're picking up so many women superstars from around the world and sending them to NXT and just... There's no reason why the developmental brand of NXT should have a better roster than Raw, SmackDown, AEW, TNA combined. That's insane. You know what I'm saying? So it's like... To have these world-renowned superstars mixed in with the superstar that, that you built to create something where it's just an extremely talented and invigorating women's roster, that has to be something that we look at like how in the world did he pull that off? And we, ha- we have to think about that kind of stuff because it's not something that realistically makes sense. You know what I'm saying? Th- there should be no reason how he pulled that off in the way that he did. But he did. Speaking about Sean, you know? I think Triple H with Shayna Baszler and Candice LeRae, he had people on the roster where um, obviously they developed, you know what I'm saying? You can go back to earlier, even earlier NXT, Sasha Banks and Bailey. you know what I'm saying? Mercedes Monet being what she is now, Bailey becoming what she is now. That's how the whole force, whole, for, I can't even say it, four horsewomen started, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, I think Trip Boyce did, did a very good job with his women's division, but I do think Shawn Michaels is building something to where when all of the, it's like say if you got the whole NXT women's roster and just pushed them, you, you separated them and then pushed them to the main roster. You just, did, you did, you're mixing Bianca Belair, who arguably to me is going to be the greatest of all time when she's done, with Julia, with Stephanie, with all of these other superstars who've never come. That doesn't, it's amazing. It's beautiful. You know what I'm saying? Women's wrestling in the WWE, while I do think it gets mistreated sometimes due to how Triple H books on the main roster, because I hate the fact that we still are in the point where we get in like eight minute matches or less than that. Sometimes three, four, five minute matches on SmackDown just to move the show along, which I do hate. And I don't know why Triple H still does that, but we're going to move on from that for right now because it's not, it's not a Triple H video. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um... Sean has gotten to the point where a lot of people want to see how Sean would do with the main roster. And I'm one of those people. I don't think Triple H should go because Triple H has done wonders with the main roster. But there are some things that he does wrong that I think Sean does better. Now, is Sean perfect? No. He's still trying to tell me that Rich Holland is a superstar I should care about. I don't. You know what I'm saying? But the fact that he is doing other things that are filling in those gaps, that is something that I think a lot of people need to realize, hey, this is this is something serious, you know what I'm saying? And while a lot of people look at NXT with the with the nostalgia rose gold glasses, you know what I'm saying? Cuz NXT it had amazing moments. Amazing moments that are just going to be stitched into wrestling history forever. You know? I partially think half of AEW's existence wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Triple H and NXT. Even though AEW ended up being the reason why NXT was taken away from Triple H. You know, and I remember when 2.0 came out and everyone's like, oh, the Nickelodeon colors. I was one of those people. I didn't really like the color scheme. eh, I wasn't really on. Oh, I wasn't really on to it. And I remember because I didn't start watching NXT like religiously until I say I think it was the Samoa Joe and Karrion Cross feud. Um, So that was like the back end where I I came in during like the last few months of NXT's um, existence as, as far as black and gold goes. And I ended up seeing Carmelo Hayes, who is my favorite superstar right now, um, my favorite current superstar, I should say. Um, Carmelo Hayes come in, and I was watching the night he debuted. And I was like, who is this guy, and why is he so damn excellent? And then we got to Braun Breaker, who is literally the Intercontinental Champion right now. You know what I'm saying? And for every Adam Cole kicking Ricochet out of the air, I give you Braun Breaker knocking Melo out there with the spear. You know what I'm saying? 
I can go moment for moment, spot for spot. If we if we want to sit down and do it, I can. Because NXT 2.0 and moving on, while it wasn't perfect, while it was very goofy at times, while it was very 2017 Monday Night Raw-ish at times because of who was running it, it still ended up developing some superstars that we have now that are either on the main roster or are very close to becoming main roster superstars, you know? Now, I do think some superstars were better off in NXT than they were. And I, I do think why you had things like Survivor Series, when NXT came in and just ran roughshod over the main roster, that is something that is going to be itched in, in, in history forever. Adam Cole doing what he did, you know what I'm saying? When Keith Lee was throwing Roman Reigns around. To look at that in hindsight is insane. To where Roman Reigns became and where Keith Lee became, it, it, it's, it's insane, you know what I'm saying? So, like, while Triple H, I'm not going to act like Black and Gold was trash or Black and Gold is overrated. I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to say that. But I will say that I've gotten a lot more excitement out of 2.0 and moving on than I have out of Black and Gold. Now, maybe that's just because I wasn't a religious Black and Gold watcher. Because I wasn't. You know what I'm saying? All the, all the stuff I saw from Black and Gold was afterwards. You know, so I sat down with one of my friends who was a religious black and gold watcher, and he just showed me all of the best stuff. And I understand. I was astonished. I ain't gonna lie. Watching it back, I do feel like it's better because knowing it, watching it live, I guess it, it, it's. I do think it was something where like you had to be there. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, NXT Black and Gold was universal. So while you do get a certain level of joy because you were there in real time. Watching it back in hindsight, knowing knowing what you know now, it may be even better because now you're seeing superstars that are doing certain things that are, may not be in the WWE anymore. Maybe they're doing thing, different things. They're maybe on the main roster now, seeing where everyone has come from. It's insane, you know. So I I sit here and I'm like, all right, I've seen NXT Black and Gold. I'm, we're living through the new era of NXT. I do think Shawn Michaels is doing a much better job of preparing new superstars to move on in wrestling. I think what Triple H was doing, he was developing the superstars, but I think he was developing them for NXT itself, you know, because I don't think that he did a very good job of bridging the gap between NXT and the main roster. That's why when Vince's crazy, goofy ass came in and he started trying to rip these superstars of what they were in NXT, making Keith Lee Bearcat and trying to make Adam Cole a manager, doing stupid things, you know what I'm saying? Putting that stupid Power Ranger thing on Karrion Cross to where now I don't even look at Karrion Cross the same because of what Vince McMahon did. I don't think Triple H did a very good job of bridging that gap. Now, maybe that was because of Triple H and Vince's relationship, which may not have been good at the time. I don't know. But all I know is that with Vince going... In the mix of Triple H now being a part of the main roster and Shawn Michaels running NXT, I, I believe, by himself, it's opened up the door for NXT to become more than just NXT. You know what I'm saying? NXT in itself is supposed to be developing for Raw and SmackDown. Triple H, I feel like NXT Black and Gold was built off of, we're going to, we're obviously under the same umbrella, but we're going to show you how different we are from Monday Night Raw and SmackDown. And when you're showing everyone how different you are, when those same superstars who wave the NXT flag so bad, when they go to the main roster and they don't develop the same, it's because they're not ready for SmackDown and Raw. They're not, their mindsets aren't ready for SmackDown and Raw. They are ready for NXT. And NXT became its own company, co- damn, its own company, excuse me. It became its own entity. So when they were moved up, it was like a disconnect somehow. They had their moments, absolutely, but there was a disconnect somewhere. And next thing you know, AEW beats NXT, Vince gets mad, takes it from Triple H, and a lot of the NXT superstars ended up going to, at the time, the red hot AEW. And now AEW falling down the tank and NXT is on its way up. And now some of the superstars who are in AEW that were in NXT, they're either not the same or they're just floating in water. You know what I'm saying? Malachi Black, floating in water. Adam Cole, floating in water. Ricochet, they're trying. They're, they're, AEW's trying, but floating in water. All three of those superstars that I just listed were doing amazing things in black and gold. And that wasn't that many years ago. It really wasn't. So, 
I just say this to say, I, I do think Triple H and Black and Gold set a certain standard and the foundation is needed. You know what I'm saying? But for what Shawn Michaels is doing right now, I think it's it's night and day. If we're talking about developing superstars, if we're talking about getting these superstars ready to move on to the main roster, Shawn Michaels is doing that so much better.